That's another bigger bug. They're all coming this direction. Dude, what deer is that? Dude, that's a prodigy. Yep, get on him. Alright, let's get this square off here. They don't want to mess with him. Guy's ears pinned back. We just got back to the truck and uh, that ended up getting pretty exciting there towards the end. That's a buck we're calling Prodigy right now. And I know uh, probably every viewer we have is gonna think we're pretty crazy for passing that deer. He's all over 200. He's for sure in the 190s. Um, we know he's not older than four. You know, we're not in a big co-op. I think that if our neighbors end up encountering him, uh, he will end up getting shot, but pretty cool. He put on a show for us. He came in from probably 200, 250 yards and uh, raked that tree and got the canary grass all on his antlers right there in front of us at 35 yards. So They actually were all coming off of the, the neighbor's ag field right by the road. The cars were passing, they were slowing down. There's one guy that came back and forth a few times and ended up running in towards us and, and giving us a chance to get a good look at him. So that was pretty cool. No merino tonight. And uh, tomorrow morning I plan on getting back in here. I need to figure out which stand I want to go to, but he's, he's still my main target on this farm. and. Uh, we're gonna keep game planning for him. As we rolled through the first week of November and into the second, the number of bucks falling to our arrows dropped off. The mature bucks are tied down with does now, making sightings much harder to come by. But this is not to say that we drew a blank. Far from it. In fact, three of the best stories we have ever told at Midwest Whitetail came together during the past 10 days. We will start with Mike Reed's hunt from the river farm on November 5th. In last week's episode, Mike passed up a giant non-typical buck that he and Jared Mills decided was still fairly young. After passing it, the two bow hunters had second thoughts, deciding it was a big mistake to let a deer like that go in a pressured area. But this is more than just the story of killing a 200 inch buck. The real hunt started after Mike released the string. Tuesday, November 5th. Jake and I are set up for the morning hunt. It's a beautiful morning. It's about 28 degrees or so. We have a light northwest wind, high pressure, clear skies, heavy frost. And we are set up on Jared and I's farm. We're back in this uh, skinny pinch spot between the slough and the river. I encountered Marino a couple years ago and uh, it's just a great rut spot I think a lot of deer that work off of our peninsula work through this little strip of timber along the river bend here we haven't seen any deer yet my primary target is Marino hoping for some good action this morning
what's well, 9 30 and it has been a very slow morning and we just had our first couple bucks cruise by the pattern that we're hunting two young bucks and uh, I'm hoping that we'll start seeing a little more of that here as the morning I'm hoping we start seeing a little more of that activity as the morning uh, progresses. You know, some of that late morning cruising and we get one of these mature bucks, particularly Merino, to come by. deer that uh, I've been on the fence about shooting which is crazy to think I actually passed him a couple nights ago we had him coming in from we were hunting in the wetland and uh, he came in from 200 yards across the field and uh, I passed him at 35 yards. I think that deer's 200 inches. I just shot a coyote right before we heard him grunting and running over here. We had a coyote coming from out of the peninsula. And uh, I just shot the coyote and knocked another arrow and we were talking about it and I hear grunting and I was hoping it was Merino. He comes in grunting chasing this doe right here to 15 yards. I got a pass through. I think I shot him a little bit, a little bit back. But um, I was trying, to, I was a little bit worried with how high up I am. I didn't want to shoot him in the shoulder blade. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got blood immediately on impact. I mean, he's spraying in here. Blood here, blood here, blood up on the tree. It, it makes sense that he went around that way. Oh yeah. And your whole arrow was over there though. Yeah. That? <laughs> That's the other guy's arrow. <laughs> your arrow. Oh, that might be the coyote. Oh, dude. I've been checking the coyote the whole time. I doubt it. I mean, we've been on his blood trail, but they both ran in this direction. Drama. <laughs> Where did the trail turn? <laughs> Back in the sand over there? <laughs> we've had good blood the entire way. It's um, definitely some lung blood. I mean, there's bubbles in it it's bright red the shot was back a little bit farther back than I would have liked but it's there's no stomach contents on the arrow but we did just get to the first bed and uh, it's two o'clock so I shot him four and a half hours ago about 40 yards from the first bed and there's a second bed and the blood trail goes into the river so uh, we're all pretty surprised I mean 
the shot's back a little bit, but the blood trail looks double lung. And it is the back of the lungs, but it's um, pretty surprising he's gone this far. And then for him to get in the river is pretty concerning. So I'm going to work on getting access to the neighboring property owner. And we're going to see if we can pick up the blood trail on the other side. Or see if he tried to go across and then changed his mind and came back. We're going to walk down the bank here and see if we can pick up any sign. But man, that looks like a deer. I think his rack would be sticking out. We need a boat, Jakey boy. Want to ride? That's some good luck, homie. Oh, dude. We just had some. He's tight. He's under there. Just concluding the saga of the prodigy buck. And what a saga it has been today. I couldn't be happier. He's such a beautiful deer. And it's really exciting to knock down such a great buck with archery tackle. I hope the video can do justice. And it's one I won't soon forget. Thanks for watching Midwest Whitetail. Well, we're having a heck of a season so far. And for those of you that have followed along, you've heard me mention Jake's name a few times. He's one of our interns at 41 North, and he's been working hard filming me all year. Well, he was able to get out on his own hunt the other day on public land, and he had a great hunt, and he was able to get a shot at a mature buck. That doe just moved off, but it's the morning of November 8th, and we're back in the same tree we've been hunting the last couple of sets here. I've had great action every time I've been in here, the deer moved through here well. As the morning goes on, I expect these deer to filter back into these ridges to bed. And with that, I think the bucks are going to come through here as well. Uh, there's a couple heavy doe trails down here. These bucks ought to cruise across these ridges. We're going to sit tight. I think it's going to be an all-day affair. And uh, just hope that we can have a mature buck cruise within bow range. And if not, it's dead quiet. So we have the call from a ways off this morning. Public land ah, here in Iowa. Man, I've been looking forward to that for so long. I mean, we've had great activity all day. These bucks have been out cruising since November 8th, and uh, I forgot my grunt tube at home. And so I snort wheezed them with my mouth. And, uh, man, he. He turned on a dime and came right up in here. He went 10 yards and went down right in front of me. That's unreal. That's awesome. Dude. Oh, what? He's dead right there. 
Congrats, dude. Thanks, man. I'm pumped. He's a good dude. I know, right? I knew, I knew it was gonna happen. I was like, just gotta stay. I'm like, I'm so cold. I may as, I might just like zip down the lake and grab you in the boat. All right. Well, it's 104, and uh, it's about two hours after I shot my buck. I had to leave to go grab the boys to help me out, and we're back here now. So we're just in the spine of the ridge here. The buck is laying up there on the spine about 50 yards away from us here, and we're going to go up there and get him and recover him. All right, well, here we are, November 8th, and we got him drug up here for you guys to take a look at him. I haven't had much time to hunt these past couple weeks. I've been super busy filming Mike and just really enjoying the internship here. And me and Mike have strung together a couple really solid hunts these past couple weeks. This spot in particular, uh, I've been accessing by boat. I actually brought my boat down from New York and uh, scouted a couple spots in the summer and decided this was gonna be one of them we we're gonna hunt. Um, had some really solid hunts here the last three weeks. Made three hunts here and today was nothing short of special. A uh, hunt of a lifetime. And uh, he's a really cool deer. He's just about my biggest deer to date. He's got a lot of really cool character. You can check out his burrs on his bases and all the way up his brows. They're just covered in burrs. Um, he's got a cool kicker off his G2, bladed G2. The grain of his, of his antlers is beautiful. And uh, just a really cool deer and really special deer to me, being that it's the first buck I've taken here in Iowa with a bow. As I mentioned earlier, it's November 8th. And there's plenty of good hunting ahead of us. Max and Josh are hunting not far away from here and have had plenty of good encounters and are definitely getting close. The whole team's out in full force and bucks are starting to hit the ground left and right. Uh, I just couldn't be, couldn't be any happier to be sitting behind this buck today and we're gonna get him drug out here down to the boat and get him out of here. It's been a heck of a day and now it's time to celebrate. Mike's giant non-typical was the third buck to come from his and Jared's river farm. Starting with the great deer Mike shot in late October, followed by Jared's classic snow-covered rut hunt from November 1st, and finally culminating with this tremendous buck. That takes us through the first two great stories from the past 10 days. The third one is the long-awaited conclusion of Jared Mills's hunt for the famed mystery buck. Yes, we are finally going to see this giant. Well, it's a frigid cold morning here in Iowa, November 12th. And unfortunately, I had too much work to do to get out in the woods. But while I was in my office working, I got the text from my buddy that he killed this big deer that we've been hunting. He killed him on adjacent property. And of course, it's bittersweet news. You know, you put a lot of time and energy into hunting one specific deer, and you hope that story ends the way you envision it. But honestly, this is the second best ending to the story that I could hope for. My buddy has put in just as much time and effort into hunting this deer as I have and uh, he certainly deserves it. He's hunted the right way and uh, it's a heck of a deer. We're actually on our way right now to go congratulate him and uh, see the deer in person. So I'm excited for that. Um, but the cool part about this story is, is we've shared trail cam pictures and sightings and all that throughout this journey and uh, I've been in the industry long enough and I've seen a lot of relationships and friendships ruined by big deer. And I'm, I'm proud to say this isn't the case uh, with this buck. You know, I'm happy to see how this has transpired all the way through. And like I said, he deserves this one for sure. I, I knew my chances weren't great, but I was just like, the long, I just got to put the time in. And he did, for and, sure. Uh, he, he came through probably 80 yards south. And I wouldn't have seen him, but he crashed, crashed through some ice. And uh, I looked over and I'm like, oh. Like that is him, it's gotta be as huge. I mean, I couldn't see him very good, but I, I could just see antlers and uh, gave him two doe bleats. And, really? and that was it. That was How it. far? 20 yards. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that's all it was. Yeah, he's awesome. That mass is incredible. Mm -hmm. So cool. He's a heck of a deer. I appreciate it. work, man. Thanks. We brought you just the short version of Mike Reed's incredible hunt for the huge non-typical and Jared Mills' story of the mystery buck here on the weekly episode. 
If you want to watch both in more detail, please check out the Midwest Whitetail Daily YouTube channel or look for the video blogs on the MidwestWhitetail.com website. The remaining members of our team have continued to hunt hard. Owen Riegler finally had a close encounter with the big bodied buck he calls picket fence. Unfortunately, family issues have pulled Owen away for an undetermined amount of time. We pray for his situation and look forward to the day when he is back in the stand. Josh Honeycutt continues to grind in Kentucky. We left him last week still searching for mature bucks. Now it seems as if his luck will never change. Losses to EHD could be to blame, but this has been Josh's slowest season in the past 10 years. Josh Sparks and Max Mongrello have continued to encounter good bucks on public land with a very close call this past week when a solid shooter slipped right through their fingers. Josh is looking forward to the coming week when he plans to take a break from the public land and spend several days hunting private land with one of his best friends, Caleb Greiner. Josh expects to spend most of his time behind the camera, but will likely get to hunt as well. I hunted most of the last week without a mature buck sighting, but that is not uncommon for me during this part of the season. I'm really looking forward to the next three weeks as the rut winds down and the deer start to head back to food. This time period produces much more consistent and predictable action as the final days of the rut see more and more mature bucks on their feet in daylight searching for that last hot doe. Much of my hope centers around a large cornfield and several smaller big and beastie plots. Most mornings we will still be on the doe bedding ridges but the evenings will be near food. The second half of November is here already. The days seem colder and grayer now and the wind calls with a lonelier voice. Most of the bow hunters are either tagged out or have spent their vacations and are back to work. The firearm season isn't open yet, at least not here. This is my favorite time. I have no idea what we're going to bring you next week on the show because that chapter has not yet been written. Our stories, those of us that are still hunting, will continue to unfold right here every week. We appreciate you joining us on this journey. We will see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail, and remember to always dream big.